I used to believe in the European dream, a free market, liberal, open and democratic brotherhood of man. So inspired was I by this vision that 20 years ago, I even became president of the UK branch of the Young European Federalists. But look what's happened since. With every passing year, I've had to come to terms with the European Union as it is, not as I would like it to be. The EU has become a sprawling, inefficient, petty, self-obsessed bureaucracy with a vociferous appetite for controlling nearly every aspect of our lives, however tiny. It is wonderful that we have had peace in most of Europe for over 70 years, but that has not been brought about by Eurocrats issuing directives stipulating the maximum suction power of a vacuum cleaner. Worse still, the EU has failed to tackle the big issues. Rules around the single currency have largely been observed in the breach. Only Luxembourg has abided consistently with the convergence criteria since 1999, and the migrant crisis has found the European Union badly wanting. These might be surmountable problems if the European Union had a genuine appetite to reform itself, but it doesn't. To witness the British Prime Minister staying up negotiating until half past five in the morning, arguing over how he would be allowed to spend about £25 million worth of child benefit, barely 0.1% of our total welfare spending, was utterly farcical. It is true that leaving the European Union would involve some uncertainties and even a few risks, but virtually every substantial human achievement involves having the guts to go it alone. And of course, how Britain would look outside of the European Union would be up to us. Staying in doesn't mean no change. It means remaining a member of a club which has a very different agenda to that of the United Kingdom. And merely having a seat round that table, especially if that seat is occupied by a Prime Minister who has deluded himself that the EU has substantially reformed, is hardly an inspiring future. The referendum will split families, political parties and business groups. Even my own think tank takes no corporate view and is heavily divided. But I've reached the personal conclusion that the brave, self-confident, forward-looking step to take is to vote leave on June the 23rd.